Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make an In-N-Out Burger fast food restaurant for all of your city building needs. And whilst I have you, please do remember to hit that like button as it helps me out so, so, so much and try and watch as much of the video as you possibly can. That helps me so much as well. But without any further ado, Let's get started. This is the amount of space required to make your build a 33 by 23 block area as represented by the white concrete grid on the ground, which you are more than welcome to make if you are planning out your city. I would highly recommend it. Here are all of the materials that we are going to be using throughout the build. Please do make sure that you have access to all those materials and enough of them as well. And now that we have all of our stuff, we can get started. Step one, come all the way over to the front left hand corner of your grid. If you've made it, count to the right, one, two, three, four, and then inwards, one, two, three, four, five. We're going to start out by placing a single smooth quartz on the ground. Place a red concrete on top. Then on top of that, place six smooth quartz. One, two, three, four, five, six. Extend to the right by eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Extend towards you by two. One, two. Up by three. One, two, three. Go to the right by seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Extend down by eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Place a red concrete and then join down to the ground using a smooth quartz. Extend the smooth quartz backwards by two. One, two. Extend to the right by eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We then want to extend that eighth block backwards towards the back of the build by 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then we're going to extend across the back by 15. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Extend towards you by 2. 1, 2. And then simply extend to the right and join back to the front. So that has been quite a complicated little adventure that we've went on. We've got kind of like a weird shape. It almost looks like a country. I don't know which one. Me no no geography. But this is what we should be looking at. Now, we've actually done a pretty good job in laying out the structure of the build, whether we realize it or not. We're going to come to the front of the build once again, and where we have this row of white or rather smooth quartz kind of floating in the air. We want to extend this down to the ground in the same manner that we did the right side. So you want to join it down to the ground using a mixture of smooth quartz and red concrete. Red concrete in is just one row above the ground and smooth quartz connects to it. We want to lay out the foundation of the build. So what this basically means is we want to take the very first smooth quartz that we place and we want to extend it to the right and join to the left side of our entrance, just like this. We could also benefit from making the upper half of the build as well. So you can see how we started the build off by building high. We want to take the top corner of the smooth quartz and we kind of want to extend it around the area which we've laid out below us, if that makes sense. So you kind of want to make sure that you're placing smooth quartz in such a way that it follows the pattern of smooth quartz just down below us like this. So it's the top of the building. We've already made the bottom of the building. It would make sense that it matches up and it wants to join to the entrance in the exact same way as well. So we just want to have something which should look like that. Hopefully that wasn't too hard to do. We also want to extend the top of the entrance area as well. So this is a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We want to make it eight rows deep as well. So that involves adding seven to the corners. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we can just extend and join back to the front like this. And whilst we are up here, we may as well do this. Place upside down smooth quartz stairs all the way around the top of the row that we've made. So it wants to stick out an extra row further than we started with. And then we're going to place red concrete on top of the original smooth quartz. So not the stairs, but the actual original smooth quartz like so. And then... We want to place a row of red concrete that is above and inside of this and we're going to keep doing it. So essentially what we're making is a red concrete pyramid and we're going to continue doing this and doing this and doing this until eventually we just have a 2x2 two two square of red concrete just up above like this. Perfect. So that is how we're going to leave it off. Excellent. That's, that's the top of the build. Perfection. Now, when it comes to the top of the entrance area, again, we're going to add a row of smooth quartz underneath the top horizontally like this. We're going to place a row of yellow concrete underneath that, once again horizontally. Extend the left side down one. Place a smooth quartz to the right. Yellow concrete underneath. Smooth quartz to the right. Yellow concrete underneath, just like this. Then... We're going to place a smooth quartz slab underneath, extend right by one, and then we want to, you see this is tricky because, okay, we want to place upside down smooth quartz stairs left and right of this right, but really we need to first place like smooth quartz on the ends of this and then we can place upside down smooth quartz stairs. You see, a little bit easier that way around. Uh, we want to fill just above this in using smooth quartz, just like this, nice and simple. Um, just below this, we're going to add another layer of smooth quartz and red concrete just to the inside pillars, just like this. We kind of want to extend the pillars backwards by two rows as well, so if you like, you can extend all the red concrete and all of the smooth quartz two rows backwards, because that's kind of where the entrance is going to be situated. So, um, we're just going to place it like this. We're going to connect the back of the pillars together, so like this inward row here. Um, I want you to place smooth quartz on the left and right side. The entrance, the actual doors are going to go here. We're going to extend the quartz up by, I want to say three, so like one, two, three, and one, two, three, like this. It might, we might even be dropping it down uh, an extra row. I don't think that we are actually. I think that we're just going to leave it like this. So um, we're going to join the smooth quartz together. We're going to add another row behind, like this. And then we're going to extend the stairs and the slabs backwards, just so that it uh, so they all connects together like that. It's not looking too bad. Um, we're not missing too many details when it comes to the front of the build either. So let's come over to the left side and where we have this red concrete right here to make it simple. Place another red concrete to the right of it. Four glass. One, two, three, four. Add another row of glass on top, and then leave it like that. And now, we're going to come over to the right side. We're going to place a red concrete on the corner. Extend left one. Four more glass. One, two, three, four. And then add another row on top of it, just like this. Now, we're going to come to the right side of the build. So, we'll just go around this kind of like clockwise, I suppose. We'll take the corner red concrete. We'll extend it back one. And then four more glass. One, two, three. Three, four. Place two red concrete. One, two. And then a glass. Add one on top. Leave a gap of one and then place two red concrete. Along the entire back of the build, you can simply pretty much just place a row of red concrete like this. Kind of like a bowling pin. Except I suppose the red concrete on the bowling pin. <laughs> concrete on the bowling pin. The red stripes on the bowling pin would be a little bit higher. So, when we come to this left side of the build, we want to add two windows. It's quite simple. We'll basically add an extra red concrete extending inwards on the front and back. Four rows of glass on the front and back. And then a row of two red concrete in between. Extend the glass one row upwards. And boom, there you go. 
So whilst maybe this is a little bit confusing, maybe you're looking at this and like, what, what have we even just done here? We've actually just done so much. So basically, red concrete is throughout the entire build. By the way, this is a drive through window, so we're not going to fill that in. We want to have red concrete on the second row of the build, just all the way through horizontally. In between the windows, we want to have smooth quartz, and above the windows, we want to have smooth quartz. So, what that means is, because we've added all, all of the windows in, and because we've now added all of the red concrete in, the rest of the build is quite simply smooth quartz. So, we'll be able to build this all the way up to the top. We already know where the ceiling is. We know, oh, hang on, I'd, I'd add an extra row of glass over here. My bad. So, we already know where the roof is how high this is going to be. So all we have to do is quite simply, and by the way, you just want that two row gap here where the drive through window is. Um, we just have to extend all of this upwards and then that's kind of like the shape of the building. Then we can do the roof and we can do the, we can do kind of like the nice little bits around the, uh, around the store. Um, we've got to add some quartz stairs around the top. We've got to add a, as I keep mentioning, I think I've used the word roof about five times now, but we have to add the roof to it as well. Um, we've got to add a wall that goes all the way around the outside too. That's going to allow us to, it kind of like frames the drive through and it also, um, gives us a good position to place the sign. We've got some car parking spots out front as well. We've also got to do the entire inside, but ladies and gentlemen, honestly, all of these things will fall into place very, very quickly once we have filled the uh, filled the walls of the building in. Um, it's just a lot of busy work. So what we want to do now that, have we filled this all in? Oh no, we've got to do the top of the entrance area as well. So Mm, we, we're gonna have to, you just want to extend down the quartz, of course, you don't want to extend um, from where these stairs are, but um, we just have to kind of like, oh no, we just have to, we'll probably extend the quartz blocks down a little bit more once we've installed the ceiling, which we're gonna be doing now because I think that's all the quartz place. So, I'm gonna place a row of red concrete one row lower than the actual top of the building right now, okay? So this is inside, this is gonna be the, the ceiling, this is gonna be the roof. Um, the reason that I want to place this now is so that we can then extend the rest of these quartz blocks down so this all attaches, it kind of like puts a finishing touch on the quartz blocks. We still have to do the stairs um, all the way around the top of the build, but that's no big deal. But this is where the... This is technically the roof of our in and out but we are going to be shrinking this a little bit. We're going to be adding a, a false ceiling into the actual build. Um, which basically, when I say fault ceiling, it's basically like that's not where the top of the building is, but it will look like it when you're on the inside. So it'll look the exact opposite of the TARDIS, smaller on the inside. <laughs> so now that we've added the red concrete, we're just going to quickly place smooth upside down quartz stairs all the way around the edge of the top of the building. So this is just going to provide us a nice little bit of a shape. We'll kind of bring everything together. It will join everything quite nicely. And um, more importantly, it's how it sort of looks uh, in real life. Uh, I've tried to go for a more classic looking in and out. There's actually a, I actually really like it, surprisingly. There's a modern version of in and out, which I'd be highly consider doing if, uh, if this video does well. Um, <clears throat> Hint, hint. Uh, <laughs> like and subscribe. Watch to the end. But yeah, this is what we're doing with the upside down stairs at the moment. Um, something else that we have to add to the uh, outside of the building as well is above all the windows, we're going to add two rows of red concrete just up above them. And then we're going to extend the lower row outwards like this. There's a canopy um, above every single window. Pretty much. So we're just going to do that. There's not that many windows because I haven't added any to the back, although you can. There's no reason you can't. I'm going to do, I think, just above the drive through. Yeah, we'll do the same thing. Yeah, why not? But uh, above the opposite side here, we want to have the same thing. It's also worth mentioning, I know that we've done it now already, but you can revert this. 
Um, you can use any color of glass and you can use glass pane if you so wanted to as well but you can see that just adds that adds a lot of detail to the building it adds a little bit a little bit of color a little bit of variety it does just look better in general now we're going to head inside so I want to head inside and I want to establish where the fault ceiling is. I think it's actually just below the real ceiling, funnily enough. Inside, in and out, and maybe we can even do a little bit of the structure. Let me bring up my interior picture so that I can... Um, okay, so the inside of the structure of in and out, it want, you want to have five rows space. So literally like one, two, three four, five, which just means, I didn't realize this, I thought it was a couple of rows lower, which means you just want to add another row of red concrete just below the row that we already have. Now, you, you might be wondering to yourself, TSMC, why is it that we couldn't just add that first row and just be done with it? Like, why have we got to add another row? So, the reason is... What the reason why it is quite handy sometimes to make roofs or ceilings double thick is because then you can add lights into them in, in the ways of sea lanterns, glowstone, um, whatever the new block from the never is called. I cannot remember right now. Um, glow shroom? I, c I can't remember what it's called. I'm, I'm, that's actually going to drive me crazy. What, uh, where are we? Ah, wait, there we go. Shroom light, there we go. <laughs> glow shroom? <laughs> I say it's not a bad guess. I mean, shroom light is not is not too far off. But anyway, so we have five rows now to play with, which is which is perfect. But we can add lights into the ceiling, and it won't show up above from the top. So it won't look uh, it won't look silly. That's the benefit of it. We want to add a glass, by the way, just above where the doorway is going to be. Just a a single row of glass, and we're going to lay out some of the structure of the inside of in and out now. All the way to the right side of the building where we have the drive through window, we want to take this smooth quartz, which is next to the regular window, this here on the ground, we want to place a row of red concrete extending from the floor to the ceiling. We want to take the bottom red concrete block and extend it to the left by eight using smooth quartz. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Place a red concrete on the end and join it upwards. You then want to leave a gap of one from the bottom and then place a single row of smooth quartz extending backwards. We then want to leave a gap of two, so this is like one and two, and then we want to have two rows of smooth quartz joining all of this together. Something else that we also want to do is on the inside of this area, we want to kind of like add a row of smooth quartz all the way around the inside of the bottom of kind of like the, the cooking area, the kitchen, I suppose you may call it. Um, maybe even to here? Uh, yeah, that looks fine. And we're going to install lights in here so that will keep everything nice and bright. Along the back wall here on the right, I want you to place one, two, three, four smooth quartz blocks. Alternatively, you can use terracotta if you want to mix up the colour scheme. Along the... I, I can never remember what to call this thing, really. It's the, the cash register area. I really don't know what to call it, because... Anyway, the payment area. I want you to leave a gap of two extending from both sides and then place yourself a, uh, a cash register, a.k.a. a smooth quartz stairs. Inside the kitchen area here as well, something that we can do preemptively, is above the left side here and above the right side, you can place two rows of two smooth quartz stairs that will act as extractor fans. Now that we have done that, we can, to the left, and again, if you want to incorporate a little bit of terracotta, feel free to do so. Um, along the back here, we're going to leave a gap of one between this counter, terracotta. Leave a gap of one, terracotta. Extending from this wall forwards, you want to place five red concrete. One, two, three, four, five. Just like this. That's excellent. And then, I think that we are pretty much, I mean... I, I suppose that we can place uh, the, the seating arrangements as well, because we have most of the blocks. Um, in front of the counter area, so like coming back to the front right-hand corner of the build here, we're going to place one, two, three 
Red concrete's extending outwards from this corner. A row of smooth quartz stairs. Is it a row of three or is it a row of two? I, it's actually a row of two, otherwise it's a bit too close to the counter. The counter! Maybe that's why it's called the counter. Ha! I remembered. Well done me. Anyway, we've got a row of two stairs, row of two red concrete. We're going to leave a gap of two. And then we're going to have the same thing on the opposite side. So stairs and then red concrete. Then, on the opposite side of this, we're just going to have a row of stairs, and then we're going to leave it. Okay, so now we're going to come over to the opposite side of the build here, and we're going to work on some table and chair arrangements. We're going to leave a gap of three between this row of red concrete here, and then we're going to place two red concrete extending from the wall on the opposite side. The reason that this is relevant is because then, from this row of two, we can place a row of two stairs just like this and then we want to do the same thing coming out of this opposite wall so a row of two stairs leave a gap and then place an opposite facing stair against it like this you want to leave a gap of one and then in the wall a row of one two three red concrete gap of one and then a row of one two stairs opposite this leaving a gap of one we want to place more stairs so again we're kind of just making seating arrangements then once again, we're going to leave a gap of one, one, two, three red concrete. And then in this corner, a row of two stairs, a gap of one, row of two stairs, just like this. Then against here, this row of quartz and red concrete, we're going to have two stairs, leave a gap of... I, well, we're actually going to line it up with these stairs, so unless we want to kind of like sneak a, sneak a little chair in here as well, which you're more than welcome to do, or you can leave a large gap in between the seating. I kind of wanted it to um, lay out a little bit like this, actually. I mean, that, that, that looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. I'm quite happy to just kind of like leave that as is. Yeah. That'll do. Then we've kind of like nailed the layout of the inside as well. Um, we have a lot of what we need to make the inside too. Um, so the, the next one that we're going to do, whilst we are in here, we are going to add a little bit of lighting and we're going to add the floor. The floor is going to be a bit of a pain. Um, it's made primarily out of and only out of actually white terracotta and light grey terracotta. We're going to be using cauldrons as well. We'll need some oak trap doors, flower pots, ferns, we'll need end rods, red carpet, and I'm trying to think on whether or not, oh, I guess we want to fill the, f no, yeah, we'll need quartz slab as well, okay, so let's add some light, no, it'll be easier to do the floor, it'll be easier to do the floor, so we've got to knock the entire floor out, ladies and gentlemen, you, but you might be wondering to yourself, why is it that you've just, you've just placed so much on the floor, you've made it so much harder to knock it out now. Sort of, but we also need less blocks now. So that's, you know, it's, it's half of one and six, six of one, half a dozen in the other. So one cat in the bush and five, five birds in the bush. You know, whatever the expression is, um, that's, that's what we've, you know, it would have been easier just to clear the entire floor. And then we could have, we don't have to clear these blocks. It would have been easier to clear the entire floor, add the floor and then everything on top. But this way we have to use less blocks and um, it's kind of fun actually weaving in between the blocks. It, I find it a little bit less boring to be quite honest, which is a, a bit of a weird thing really. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> I guess it, it, it's just more fun to uh, kind of like dig out in between all of the blocks than um, kind of like just non-mindedly just dig out the entire area but anyway the floor is very simple it's an alternating pattern of white terracotta and light gray terracotta it's very 80s it's very 90s it's very like colorful old school classic kind of like weird colored tile floor quite honestly so if you want to pick like an entire row that you can just do like in front of the counter and just like have the alternating pattern and then you're just going to have to like build the pattern in between all of the stuff that we have on the floor and once again i don't know why i just i find it far more interesting to place it this way i wasn't going to i was going to do it the easy way but i i kind of like uh kind of like placing it this way plus it's sort of satisfying to um watch it all um like pan out in between everything like i don't know there's something satisfying about that rather than just having like a smooth clean floor maybe i'm just crazy maybe i've made too many floors 
I don't know. But... Definitely a bit more fun. So, what else have we got to do with the inside, with the materials that we have? Um, we can do quite a bit. There's a lot of plants on the inside. I'm trying something a little bit different with the interiors. And after taking some inspiration from the actual In-N-Out restaurants, like... I, I don't know if you guys realize this. I mean, you know, I, I don't... I'm not always able to completely do it with interiors because sometimes interiors are just so weird looking and like in real life and like it doesn't translate to minecraft very well but um i do try and gather inspiration from actual like actual restaurants actual proper buildings like it's oh, that should be here like um I, I noticed that in a lot of these old classic in and outs, not only do we have the, what I would consider an ugly floor, although I do, I, I'm kind of warming up to it, honestly, I don't know why, I think it might just be a bit nostalgic. Um, I, not only have we kind of like done that with the floor and the layout and kind of like the, the count area where you would order your food, but um, I've also done it in the fact that we've got these cool hanging lights as well that are going to be placed in between um, these booth areas. So the way that I want them positioned is I want to have two end rods hanging down um, where we have the red concrete, like the end of these red concretes to kind of like um, highlight the booth area. So here and here. Um, you could place enough... Nah, I'd, I'm quite happy just to have them there, quite honestly. Unless you wanted to do something like where we have this row of red concrete here. If you wanted to mirror that, kind of like in this position, then that might be... That might look alright, but I don't want too much of it either. So maybe like, this is probably the max amount that I would add. Um, I quite like that. That doesn't look too bad. Ha! Huh. Rhymed. Um, but another part of inspiration that I took, I think that I mentioned it, there's a, there's a lot of plants hanging off of the walls. Like, there's a lot of shelves for some reason. Uh, I don't know if they're real plants or what, but above this area here, and by the way, th this is a bin area, so I'm just placing a couple of cauldrons here, a couple of oak trap doors on top, maybe a flower pot. I might even place some, like, ketchup packets or something along, uh, along here too. But above this area, I'm going to place a row of smooth quartz slabs, Flower pots on top, and it's kind of like just boring plants, really. It's just kind of like I, I get they're probably fake, but kind of like ferny looking plants, just kind of like green, luscious, luscious looking plants. We want another shelf here, like um, just above, like where this booth is here, above the door, like extending to the corner. We want to have again another row of ferns. I actually really like this decoration, by the way. I think it adds something quite interesting. Um, to the build. I really do like it. Like, is it, it's, it's just something about it. I, li I, I just like how it looks. Um, above where we have this booth area as well. Like, we, and we just want to do it to, like, the edge of where of where the booth would be. So the table would stop here, so that's where we'll stop it. And we just want to have it here as well. Um, and whilst we do have our end rods out and we have our carpet, um, everywhere that we've got a table, and this is why you don't necessarily need... Um, ceiling lights by the way but um, everywhere that you have a table you want to have end rods making a table and on top of the end rods you're going to want to place uh, red carpet um, feel free to use any white block that would also make a table topper i.e white carpet i.e white pressure white pressure plates uh iron pressure plates or heavy weighted pressure plates as they may sometimes also be known um feel free to use those instead but i i like the red because it's very very white and like it's almost a perfect balance really of white and red in here um if if you do that like it's not too much of one or the other i love th this feels so nostalgery like i've never been in an in and out by the way it's i'm not even in the right country for it but I, this feels not, like, this feels like a really old McDonald's. I just realized that uh, I, I didn't do the floor inside of this area. It feels like a retro, a retro fast food restaurant. Like, it, this is how, like, McDonald's used to feel to me uh, when, I, when I was a kid. Um, when all of them had, like, play areas and, like, just... I just, I just remember being excited about the toys and stuff. Like, it, I, I don't know why. I just get that feeling from this. I, It might be a weird thing. I know it's a, a, a make-believe restaurant in Minecraft, but I, I don't know. I, I kind of get that 
that kind of like warm little fuzzy nostalgic feel from the the feel of the place but um i might also place a couple of red carpets just um by the tills here and you can even decorate the tills with uh, some flower pots if you like as well um we can place a cauldron in between where we are going to have the cookers here. So that's going to be placed in there and that's going to be like a deep fat fryer. Along the terracotta here, I'm going to place a couple of, uh, a couple of flower pots here on the right side. You can decorate the area a little bit by placing a couple of flower pots and or sea pickles because they, they look like cups. You can place those anywhere that you might think that they go. Um, when it comes to the rest of the inside here, we're, we're kind of like burning, uh, oh, we can actually use red dye for this as well. Red dye, item frames, and paintings, and you're going to want to have a solid block on you. Um, I like the idea of having a couple of paintings, perhaps above where these booths are. So, um, I'm thinking one by ones stacked on top of each other. So, something like this, and something like that. No, yep. I, d I just kind of like that as a bit of a decoration. That looks pretty good. Um, well, it looks all right. <laughs> um, where else? Here would also be a good. I was I was looking for places. Ah, oh, we're gonna we're gonna encounter a problem though. So if we play, oh no, no, we're not. I thought it'd clip into the. Um, I'm looking for something unique, by the way. So I thought it'd clip into the slab, but it's not. No, no, no. What about the carrot? I'd accept the carrot. Although apparently it's not a carrot, the painting that I'm looking for. It's it's like a... It's supposed to be... Come on! Where's the carrot? Where's the carrot painting? Has it been removed from the game? Where is the carrot painting? This is, this is a real unlucky run. Come on! This... this Ah! Oh, just destroyed it! Okay, fine. We're, we're dealing with that. Ah, oh, I knew that had happened. I knew that had happened. That happens all the time. Ah. Oh. <laughs> and so the carrot painting does still exist. So the inside of this place is actually just about decorated. We will be coming back in. Oh, also, if it, like I said, you can add like a couple of ketchup packets. So like an item frame with some like rose red in here will look pretty good. Part of me is saying to complete this, but we actually need quite a few more materials to finish it off. So I'm actually quite content with leaving this as it is now. And now we're going to head back outside. So completely forgot that we were still working on the outside of the build. With um, the interior managed to take up a good amount of time there. Um, what do we want? What do we want to do? for the outside of the build now. So we're gonna, end, we, we need to establish like the drive through area. We need to add a sign, all sorts of stuff. So uh, grab terracotta, we will need that. We'll need smooth stone, we'll need gray concrete. We'll need smooth quartz block. We'll need smooth quartz stairs. We'll need red concrete. We'll need yellow concrete. What else will we need? Um, we'll leave it at that for now, but there is more. Actually, we'll grab the yellow carpet too. So. First up, we're going to add a wall all the way around the edge of the property. I sound like a real estate uh, a real estate guy. Around the edge of the property, we'll install a, a double wide stone effect fence, and this will increase the value. We'll be... So we're going to add two rows of terracotta on the left, right, and back sides. This is going to create a wall. It's going to kind of frame the drive through It's going to give us a place to install the... I don't quite know what to call it. It's this cool overhang that I found on some of the uh, old in and outs, which I really like. And we'll actually make it now. So on the front right-hand corner of your terracotta, we're going to place a row of four. One, two, three, four smooth quartz. We're then going to place another row of smooth quartz. The smooth quartz wants to be placed on the outer boundaries just left of this window area, if that makes sense. The smooth quartz wants to be as high as the smooth quartz to the right of us. It'll look like that. There's, in addition to this, another row of smooth quartz that wants to be placed. It wants to be placed along this wall here on the right, one row inwards to in relation to where the edge of this building is. The smooth quartz also wants to be as high as the other smooth quartzes. We then want to place upside down smooth quartz stairs all the way around, oh dear, all the way around the edge of the smooth quartz blocks. So it will join 
to your in and out building. Ah, oh, this is the worst. It will join. <laughs> Hang on. There we go. And that this is going to be tricky too, placing uh, placing all of these. It you know it might actually be easier if I just create this this row here, and then maybe if I I'm going to have to destroy this, aren't I? <laughs> so here, here, perfect, and then I can destroy that. There we go. So. There we go. We have an overhang. It's present on some of the old in and outs, and I really like it. I think it's quite unique. You can fill it in if you like. Um, I'm not. I think I'm just going to leave it as is. I quite like it. It um, it doesn't really serve too much more of it. I think they're usually filled in. I, I think it's supposed to be a kind of like a... What would you call it? Like a don't get rained on device. Um... But, I mean, it's it's up to you whether you want to fill it in. I mean, I'm filling it in now, but that's only to see if I like uh, like having it filled in or not. Um, other than that, we are going to add a little bit of a, uh, a chill-out area in front, kind of like an eating area, as it is known. So, there we go. Yeah, that, I mean, it looks, it looks fine. Um, the eating area is basically from the front corner of the restaurant to the outer boundary and all the way to the left side of the entrance where we have this pillar. Um, it's all going to be smooth quartz, uh, smooth, smooth stone. There's so many smooth, so many different quartz. Um, it's all going to be smooth stone, so you can dig this all out. You can replace it with your smooth stone. Um, there's going to be a bench. It's only a singular bench. There's actually not too much room. Um... There's, yeah, there's, there's just not too much room, and I, I want it to look like a bench because that's what I, I saw on, uh, on in a little bit of research. I saw a bench out there rather than like a table and chairs, and I like that idea because why not? Um, we could even... Actually, I've just thought of a way we can decorate the bench. Um, so now that we've placed all the smooth, uh, smooth stuff... Um, I don't think we ever need the terracotta or smooth stone again, so we're going to grab the spruce planks and the spruce stairs. And it's it's absolutely nothing fancy, but where we have the center two blocks of the window, leave a gap of one and place a two by two uh, square of uh, spruce wood. Place uh, stairs on the end, boom, there you go, you've got yourself a table. If you want it to be fancier, you can place upside down spruce stairs like this instead of the plank. Oh, oh, eh, e, no. Yes. Yes. So you can create an actual table if you like. It almost looks a little bit better, really. Um, you could use, you could even use like a, a yellow carpet as kind of like a napkin or something. Um, we can have a flower pot on here. You can even have food items in item frames if you like. But I'm pretty happy with that. The rest of the area is actually quite easy to do. There's not too much to it. Um, we're going to need some... Uh, leaves and some flowers. I'm using jungle leaves and azure bluettes. And I'm also going to need some yellow carpet. To make the sign, well, yeah, I mean, it's still a sign. I don't know whether it's got an actual proper name, but it's like those stick signs that uh, you have next to next to the restaurant. So, like, smooth quartz block we'll need for it. We'll need red concrete. We'll need yellow concrete. And uh, in this crevice here, I'm going to place a row of jungle leaves here with... Azure bluettes in front of this, and that is basically just to um, spruce things up a bit. Not only the shape of the build. Oh, by the way, we're missing grey concrete. Um, it not only does it um, kind of like mess with the shape of the build a little bit, but it's not an uncommon thing to find a load of like plants and hedging and stuff like around right through. Um, so I, th I think it's uh, it's quite a good little feature. Other than that, it's kind of like just dead space, not the game, literal dead space. Um, because uh, unless you just turn it into more road, but I figure we might as well um, we might as well liven things up a bit. I was going to say spruce things up, but since we're using jungle leaves, we will jungle things up a little bit. So just like this, destroy all of this, turn it into grey concrete. This is all road. Um, I've made I've intentionally made the drive through about three rows thick because when I'm making cars, it, that's the rough. That's pretty much it. Like, uh, the, the cars are about three rows thick, bicycles or... Si not bicycles. Motorcycles are one row thick. Um, very rarely do I ever make a car that's more than three rows. And if it was, then it can't come through the drive through I guess. I guess if you uh, if you have, like, a Range Rover or a Land Rover or whatever, you're not allowed to enjoy an in and out burger. 
I'm sorry, but that's the way it goes. At my in and out, Bogrits only cars that are less than three rows thick, and I think you'll find that in real life. Cars are any more than three rows thick. It says there, right above the drive through it's like, you know, you've got that thing where it's like um, that big bar where it's like height two meters or I guess two blocks, but width it almost always says three three blocks thick um it it always says that look the next time you go to mcdonald's or wherever have a look it'll it'll say it right uh, right next to the measurements um i don't even know what i'm talking about anymore but the fact of the matter is that we have filled in <laughs> imagine if imagine if things in real life were measured out with blocks <laughs> That'd be pretty crazy. I think that a block in Minecraft is actually a meter by meter by meter. It's a meter cubed, which uh, is actually like huge. I get so hang on. So Steve then is what Steve's what two blocks, maybe a little bit about two ish blocks, right? Steve's just about two meters tall. That is massive. That's taller than me. Taller than most people. That's that's insane. Steve is a giant. Anyway, we've added all of the grey concrete in here. All I want to do now is add in some car parking space, um, kind of like separation. So from the front left-hand corner of the store, one, two, three, four, five yellow carpets extending. Leave a gap of three, and then one, two, three, four, five more. So that's you know about as long as uh, my cars get as well. So that's perfect. Um, we're going to take the front left hand corner of this wall and we're going to add a row of five um, smooth quartz on top of it. So one, two, three, four, five. Add two rows of red concrete, extend right and extend left. And then we want to place a yellow concrete in front of the smooth quartz at the top. Two diagonal blocks extending upwards, so one, two to the left. Um, add an extra one on top and extend to the right until it's as thick as the sign itself. And boom, there we go. I mean, we have pretty much like a little mini version of the in and out logo. What else might we want to add? Um, you'll notice that the right side here of the drive through is four rows thick. You may want to limit that by adding a row of leaves to the right side, making sure that you leave a bit of a gap to get into the drive through You might find that you like that a little bit better, or you don't. I mean, you know, those are the two choices. So, if you once you've done that, we kind of have to add the sign. There is an actual sign sign that spells out in and out for you, or in out as it is, because uh, I didn't want to add the apostrophe. I think there's an apostrophe or two of them. Anyway, we'll need looms, white banners, and red dye. Chuck the loom down on the ground, crack it open, and place yourself a brand new, fresh, crispy white banner in there with some red dye. The first letter that we've got to make is probably the easiest one ever. It's I, which is just a vertical row of red dye in the middle of the banner. Next, we've got to make N. This is a bit trickier, but trust me, I can I can help you through it. A vertical row of red dye on the right side, a vertical row of red dye on the left side, and you know, this is going to be surprising. A top left to bottom right hand corner row of red dye right in the middle. Boom. N. We can actually use two Ns, so um, you'll either have to make another one, but if you're in creative, you'll be alright. We have to make O now, so O is... Again, probably one of the easier banners that we could make. Horizontal row across the bottom, horizontal row across the top, vertical row on the right, and a vertical row on the left. Boom. Oh. U is very similar, except we don't have the row across the top. So, vertical row on the left, vertical row on the right, horizontal row across the bottom. That is U. Then... We've just got to make T. Ah, oh, T. Vertical row up the middle, horizontal row across the top, boom, T. Now we have the word T now. Now that sounds like a word in a different language and I hope that it's a clean word. Basically, we want to place the banners in between the bottom and the top row of yellow concrete starting on the left i n n o u t in and out again there should be an apostrophe here really if you want to nah, this 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 isn't gonna work but if you want to add like an apostrophe i guess that does that sort of look like an about i don't know i think that there's an apostrophe i'm not even gonna do i have to google that i'll google it later but there we go in and out 
I'd probably remove the crimson buttons, but now, ladies and gentlemen, we have to add a door, and we've just pretty much got to add some detail to the kitchen. That's it. I'm going to go away, I'm going to grab all of those things that I need just to make sure that I get the right amounts, and I'll be back once I have them. And I'll tell you what, I'm a nice guy, I'll give you a little item list when I get back to. Hey, don't mind me, I'm just looming around. Anyway, I know what we need to complete the build now, it's not too much stuff. We need iron doors, weighted pressure plates, furnaces, rail, Brewing stand, item frame, oak signs, and then loads of stuff to put in said item frame. So I've got bread, cake, and then a load of cooked meats, cooked chicken, cooked pork chop, cooked beef, cooked mutton. By the way, I also did discover the whole sign situation. Like, I went and researched it. Um, there are dashes in between in and out so this isn't too far off really and the sign would actually fit if we stretched all of these out and put these in between but i really like how it looks so eh you know pepe hands i guess so anyway we're going to place a double door where the door should go iron pressure plates to open them and on the other side as well. Inside, we're going to place furnaces underneath where the extractors are, like this. We're going to stick a rail above the cauldron, brewing stands where we have these two parts, and we are going to place also a set of menu items on this board. So basically, this is going to be like item frames vertically, Signs, item frames, signs, item frames, signs, item frames, signs. In those signs, I would recommend, I'm not going to do it because it drives me crazy to do so, listing menu items. So whatever that might be, I'm not quite sure what an in and out serve of them burgers, feel free to do it yourself. But I'm going to grab bread, cakes, because who doesn't love desserts, and all of the cooked meats. So on the left here, bread symbolizes burgers, whatever. Um, we're going to have chicken, pork, beef, mutton, and then just cake here on the end. And then just represents the menu. Now, we are missing one thing, as I realize. Sea lanterns. I'm sure it'll be in the item list unless I've forgotten. <laughs> sea lanterns are going to be placed... I think I might actually stagger them, so I might put them just one row above. Um, sea lanterns are going to light up the uh, cash register till area. Um, over here, just like this, it's going to just light up the ceiling. And boom! Sort of done the whole thing, guys. I'm, I'm really happy with how it's turned out. I, I really, really love this build. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is what your In-N-Out burger should look like once it has been 100% fully completed. I'm very happy with how this turned out. I really love this, and I think this will make a great addition to any of your cities or towns. If you have enjoyed this tutorial, please do remember to hit that like button as it really helps me and the channel out very, very much. If you're new around here, please do consider subscribing and clicking that little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box. If you want to make anything else by me, check out the card system, the description below, and the top of the comment section for more. I'll be linking the City Builds Playlist, which is going to be worked on heavily this year. We're going to have a year, or most of a year, so some of the year of City Builds. I think that you guys are going to really enjoy what we make. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Good bye.